Hello, so I'm Ag Stevens, and we imagine that you're um, probably quite new to Jasmine, so we'll give you a, an overview of what it might be used for. And one first view on that is to think about what Jasmine is in terms of hardware. So we have over 20 petabytes of high performance storage, and that's growing, as I'll mention later. Um, around 6,000 compute cores. Um, this is all underpinned with some high performance networking. Um, we have a private cloud um, for more flexible and, and sophisticated use and a set of dedicated servers for um, high memory processing, um, data transfer and other use. Um, we are the, the CEDA team, we're the Centre for Environmental Data Analysis and we manage the Jasmine service, but the actual hardware and the core systems are run by the scientific computing department here at the Rutherford, Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. So it's worth just thinking about some usage examples. And Jasmine is, is very much about collaboration and different communities being able to work together. And we've got three nice examples here. So first of all, we've got the um, high resolution climate modeling group, um, which is a collaboration between people in NCAS and the Met Office. And they've used Jasmine to um, analyze and post-process um, very high resolution climate simulations, looking at tracking tropical cyclones, as you can see in this plot on the left here. And um, one of the advantages for their use was they got their processing time down from around three months to less than a day to run these kind of um, uh, high level um, tropical cyclone tracks. The, the middle panel here is the name models. So this is a Met Office atmospheric dispersion model. And um, the Met Office has for years shared this with people in the academic community and wider. And we found there was a real advantage in using Jasmine because they could bring over 40 terabytes of input data onto the, our system um, and deploy a single version of the model and the associated data in a way that people could come from a variety of different locations and access the same resources. On the right hand panel, this is the ESA SST um, CCI project. So this is sea surface temperatures for the climate change initiative by ESA. And folks at Reading University have generated um, about 50 terabytes of sea surface temperatures for the CEDAR archive and they've been able to process hundreds of terabytes of other Earth observation products to generate this. So there are three nice different examples of, of how you might use Jasmine. And let's look at how you might come and approach Jasmine from, from different perspectives, from different user roles. So first of all, thinking as a scientist, um, you'll see that some of the text here is um, highlighted in bold. Those are the things that we're really going to be focusing on today, the, the very basics of getting started with Jasmine. So you'll need to log on. Um, lots of people will use Jasmine um, either to store their data or to share data with other people and bring data back to their own site. So there are a number of different protocols and tools that you can use to do that. And we'll talk about some of those today. You might be interested in running your processing code and doing your analyses on Jasmine. And there are two main methods um, that you might use for that. You might log into our interactive servers, or you might want to use our batch cluster and run in parallel. Um, th those particular topics we'll deal with in, in future webinars. And of course, the CEDAR archive itself is located on Jasmine, along with large group workspace for specific projects. Um, and you can access the data in those and potentially write your data to group workspaces. You might also be interested in using Jasmine from the perspective of a programmer or software developer. And you might ask, well, why would you want to do that? So typically you'd be writing code um, that needs to access the kind of large environmental data sets that are stored on Jasmine. So having those right next to the code is obviously very useful. Um, we have a, a common software environment, a set of open source tools that are deployed across all the common Jasmine servers, including the Lotus cluster. You've got access to the Lotus cluster, which gives you this parallel processing ability. And it's a place where you can share tools with your end users and potentially with other collaborators. There might be other special cases where you want to develop 
on bespoke servers or use our cloud. And some groups will be building data processing workflows with tools such as Silk or Rose. So you might also be a principal investigator. So you're taking a higher level view of what you want from Jasmine. Um, so typically you would negotiate and, and request project resources. So you might want these things called groups for workspaces that we'll talk about later, which provide storage. You might want processing capability and access to servers, or you might want more bespoke um, resources. And then of course, once a project's running, you need to have people in place to manage those resources because you have multiple users accessing common resources. And it's a place where you can share your data, share your code and set up uh, more complex data workflows. Finally, typically you want to generate some data sets to put into the Cedar archive. Um, the last role that might be interested in, in interacting with Jasmine is from the point of view of an interested organisation or funder. So you might be interested in um, funding the future infrastructure or current infrastructure. You might also have requirements that stretch what we currently provide and you want to feed into future developments to improve the service. Um, an example of an existing um, user is, is DEFRA, the government department that's currently exploring if it can use Jasmine for earth observation data processing and sharing of those products. Um, I told you earlier on the size of Jasmine's 20 petabytes. Right now we're in the middle of an upgrade and so we'll be more than doubling the storage available up to 44 petabytes, um, which is equivalent to storing over 10 billion photographs. Um, clearly there are many of you out there with lots of requirements, so I'm, I'm sure this will be well used. So finally, just a set of links that you can come back to and explore the details.